Hey guys, it's Welps, and I'm going to be going over the Hatchet GS build that I have settled with, where I use the Hatchet as main and GS as secondary. This is my Hatchet tree, pretty standard, um, Berserk, Barrel Rush, and Social Distancing. I have my extra point on Aim Throw, um, but if you don't like Aim Throw, you can also go with Stay Back for extra CC, or Purge for extra survivability, or accumulated power for potential extra damage. But I think aim throw is the best choice because it helps me finish off a player in a distance. This is my greatsword tree. I'm playing with Rush. Counter and set fast strike. It took me a while to get used to strike as I was originally using Skyward Slash, but I just find it more reliable and safer than Skyward Slash. But if you want to play a bit more aggressive, Skyward Slash is not bad. Also, a small tip with strike if you swap your weapon after strike, the animation is shorter, so you can attack straight away with your hatchet. Relentless Refresh Many people are confused about this You don't have to make a kill with a rush Any kills you make with Greatsword will proc this Moving on to weapons For the Hatchet, the two perks on the aim for is Attunement and Rogue Any Attunement is fine but preferably Abyss or Aboreal As some people suck at Ice and Fire gems But no one really gems Nature or Void But yeah, the difference is probably gonna be like 1 or 2% Attunement damage give or take so it's not a big deal. Um, for your third perk, you want Kini Empowered. As for the GS, the two perks you want to aim for is Attunement and Kini Jagged. And for the third perk, you can either have Rogue for maximum burst damage, or the Counter perk, or the Plague Crit for utility. For gems, I use Opal on both, and Nature Dot for Rune Glass. This is also the reason why I don't need Jagged on Hatchet with the new Rune Glass. They will have permanent debuff for my exploitation and changes to Kini Empowered not being transferable anymore on weapon swap, having jagged on your sub weapon is better choice. For armors, we're gonna use this rule which applies to pretty much any build. Um, your first line should always be resilient. Second line is a must have weapon perk slash shirking fortification and shirking energy if it's on a pants. For this build, the must have perk will be rentless Freedom. For your third perk, it's gonna be Refreshing, or another bonus weapon perk, or Freedom or Vigor. Um, I don't really rate Freedom in this build because we already have Berserk and also the Rush with a perk that gets you out of the root and slows. The bonus weapon perks that are worth having but not really necessary are Crippling Feral Rush, um, Calamity Counter, and Refreshing Distancing Throw. This is my current setup. Choking Fort Resilient, Choking Fort Resilient, Choking Fort and Relentless Freedom, Choking Fort, Choking Energy, Resilient, pretty much biz, it goes with all light strength build. Um, Choking Fort Resilient, Refreshing Ward is just a bonus. My amulet is Champion's Amulet from PvP track. It's got stem recovery, health, Choking in power. I think it's biz for light armor DPS. My ring is Mortal Empowerment, Leeching, and Hardy. Um, this is my OPR ring. Um, for arenas and wars, this is what I use, Champion's Ring. Because it's got Invigorated Punishment. Um, yeah, so Hardy is must-have. And depending on the game mode, you want Mortal Empowerment or Invigorated Punishment. And to make it this third perk is gonna be Slash Damage. My earring, Refreshing Toast and Prefrank Toast. Those two are the important ones, and refreshing. And my favorite heart rune is the detonate. For gems, I like to balance the physical and elemental evenly, with a bit more on thrust damage. 
as you know, it's bow PR and musket PR these days. For rune glass, I'll be going with punishing for extra melee damage. All the stats are played with 200 plus strength, 150 dex, and 150 con. Gameplay wise, your priority targets are the squishies. You want to hold greatsword when engaging for perfect vigilance. And this is my opener. I roll in to proc opal and step and strike. And then I use rush to close gap and apply damage and slow. This gives me 4 buffs already, so we get max in power from blade honing. I then do charged heavy because they are slowed and nerfed to the light roll distance dispatch. Even if they roll, they are in range of my heavy attack. And then I follow up with the strike to finish them. If you land this combo, most light decks will die. And this just shows the importance of iframing as light player. Panic rolls will get punished. Alright, thanks guys for watching and enjoy the rest of the gameplay. Thank you.